What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are in a 2014 Cadillac CTS-V wagon. It's a car I've been super curious about for a long time. I've never driven a CTS-V of any type. The only fast Cadillacs I've driven are the ATS-V and the CT4-V Blackwing. So very curious to finally get a taste of a V8 powered V product. This car is owned by my friend Derek. Like I mentioned, it's a 2014 model year, the very last model year of the wagon body style. This one has the extra desirable six-speed manual transmission. We're powered by the LSA 6.2 liter supercharged V8. It makes 556 horsepower and 551 pound-feet of torque. The only mod on this car, Derek mentioned, is an aftermarket intake which might actually add 10 to 20 horsepower. Unlike other fast sedans and wagons of this time period, this actually has hydraulic power steering. We have an LSD as standard, it's rear wheel drive of course, and this comes with Magna Ride suspension. We have a dedicated suspension button. You can set this to Tour or Sport. So even though it's got a boatload of power, it also weighs as much as a boat. So I don't expect this to be the sharpest handling machine, but I'm still gonna take this thing for a rip and see how it feels. It's a keyless start, but there's still this faux key knob that you have to turn like a normal key. Electronic parking brake. Recaro seats, by the way, which are highly adjustable. You can actually adjust the bolster width for both your thighs and your back. I have this seat as low as it'll go. Unfortunately, it's still not low enough for me. I feel like I'm sitting very upright. My knee is actually hitting the bottom of the steering wheel when I have the steering wheel set to the position that I like. And uh, when I press the clutch pedal in, the positioning of my legs here is just not ideal. I feel like I'm bending at the knee quite a bit in order to hit that clutch pedal. Might be a little bit of a challenge to heel toe. Traction control button is on the steering wheel. We have traction and stabila track. All right, let's see how the CTSV wagon feels out here. The manual is typical GM feeling. It feels like pretty much every Corvette or Camaro SS manual. It's very notchy, a little bit higher effort, but overall a very satisfying manual to use. When you're just putting around, it's a very refined and quiet driving experience. The engine doesn't make a whole lot of sound at low throttle input. It rides beautifully with these Magna Ride dampers. NVH levels are low, no real squeaks and rattles anywhere. But let's see what happens when we put our right foot down. Oh my God. Wow, so much torque. Ah yeah, not easy to heel toe. And in these corners, even with the dampers set to sport, there's so much body roll. Look at that. Ah, the whole car is just leaning. Some understeer on throttle there. Brakes actually feel pretty decent. Stock pads doing their job. Oh, wow. That's some body roll. Look at that torque. Red line's only a little above 6,000 RPM, but you can put your foot down at basically any RPM, and this thing hauls like a freight train. Oh yeah, understeer. Ah, <laughs> definitely feels like a 4,400 pound wagon. Does not hide its weight. It's an absolute brute of an American sports wagon. The engine's still a bit quieter than I expected, even with this aftermarket intake, which opens up the sound. Huh. Listen to that supercharger whine. It's so loud it almost overpowers the actual sound of the V8 itself. Oh, got a little bit of wheel hop there. nice and early for these corners so we can set up the turn in requires a lot of steering input to get this car turned we're just on some Advan apex tires so not the grippiest compound either huh. oh my gosh this is comical let me put it in perspective for you guys the difference in weight between this and the Subaru BRZ or Honda S2000 
is the same as the difference between this and a Ford F-150 Raptor R, which is a massive, massive truck with a supercharged V8. Now that just goes to show how massively heavy this thing is. That understeer. Woo. This thing defaults to understeer. I'm sure we could get the rear end to step out if we really tried, but I'm not gonna try that on this road. There's just too little margin for error with this big and heavy of a vehicle. It takes time for this thing to turn to slow down, to respond to any of my driver inputs. It definitely is just an exercise in managing understeer. Heel toe, can't get used to that. The engine doesn't make enough sound, so I can't really tell audibly if I'm getting the blips correct. So there's a bit of a learning curve. Oh yeah, not meant for the downhill, this car feel every single pound of its 4,400 pound curb weight. The brakes are still doing pretty well though, no fade. Decent bite and modulation. Steering is pretty damn good, hydraulic steering. The weight of the car definitely numbs it a bit, but it feels way better than any modern BMW EPS. The ratio is a little bit slow, but I actually prefer it like this. You can very precisely place the front end. Magneride dampers, they handle bumps like a champ, but this thing must have a pretty low spring rate because there's so much body roll, as you would want for a 4,400 pound wagon. You wouldn't want to make this thing too stiff and completely ruin the ride, because then what's the point of all that cargo space in the back if the thing rides like crap? Woo, very interesting driving experience. It's comical, it definitely is comical. That's a word I would use to describe it. It feels like a Camaro SS or C6 or C7 Corvette with an extra thousand pounds and a much higher seating position. All right, one proper straight line pull, then we'll sum up this review. <laughs> Yep, that's fast, that's fast. This car has been tested at 3.9 seconds, zero to 60. For a rear wheel drive, 556 horsepower V8 monster that weighs 4,400 pounds, that is an impressive zero to 60 time. It has more traction than you might think. Maybe because of all that weight on that rear axle due to the wagon body style, it's helping it just dig into the asphalt Anyways, 2014 CTS-V wagon, six-speed manual. What a hilarious performance car. Tons of power stuffed into a massive wagon body style that weighs significantly more than its sedan counterpart. This car actually makes a lot of sense as a daily driver as long as you can live with the poor fuel economy. I think it's rated at 16 miles per gallon combined on premium gas, of course, but that aside, this thing's super comfortable, it rides well, it has excellent seats, although the seating position is not ideal for me. Interior quality, actually not bad. We have some stitched leather along the dash and the doors, Alcantara wrapped steering wheel and shift knob. There is some piano black plastic along the center console and this chrome surround to the clock and the knobs. Not the best, but that's not really what you buy a 10 year old Cadillac for. You buy it because what other vehicle offers this combination of things that are desirable to enthusiasts? The hydraulic steering, the wagon body style, the six-speed manual with an LSD, rear-wheel drive, and a big stinking V8 up front. Nothing. This is one of one. And I think they only made about 1,500 of these CTS-V wagons, most of which were in a very sad configuration with a six-speed torque converter automatic. So if you can get your hands on a manual example, it's definitely a keeper. On the market today, these are going for around $70,000, if not more. The MSRP of this one was actually 73 grand, so 
the value retention is absolutely there. A big shout out to Derek for letting me drive this CTSV wagon. Let me know what you think of this car. Is it worth the price, $70,000? Unless you really, really want a V8 wagon, are there better options out there for a high performance, practical daily driver? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next video.